Hi, this is Bill here. We're going to talk about how to harvest your oil sample and prepare it for shipment. When you get your P1 kit, you're going to get the Polaris oil test kit. A couple things here we've got to take a look at. You got the shipping bottle, which is the black bottle. You got the sample bottle, which is the white bottle. And most important, you have the data sheet. You have to make a decision here about, in terms of the harvesting procedures, about whether you're going to do an oil change now or you're not going to do an oil change. And I'm going to show you both ways. Now, I change my oil about every 10,000 miles because I, I don't tow real hard. I don't push a truck. I just drive it around, tow a little bit now and then. But at 5,000 mile intervals, I do what, the no oil change harvest procedure. So you have to make a decision at this point whether you're going to change your oil or not because there's two different procedures for that. So we're going to change your oil on this 7.3 and this is really really simple. As you pull the drain plug you know after you've warmed up the truck you just stick the bottle underneath the oil sample and get you a sample. It's just that simple. And that's it. And now you got your oil sample. Put the lid on it. She's messy. It's a messy mess. And you don't really want to fill it completely just up to this line. We'll pour a little bit of this out. So I poured some of the oil out here so it's below this little line on the side. And now you're ready to go on to the next step, which is the mailing step. All right, we're going to talk about how to extract oil from an engine if you're not doing the oil change. We do it through the dipstick tube. And I put together a little apparatus that you can buy at the uh, auto parts store. Um, they, it's usually called a brake bleed system, but I use it for this. It consists of a vacuum pump, a little hose, a reservoir that, to, to capture the oil, and then a piece of tubing that's small enough to go down your dipstick tube to extract the oil. One of the things that's absolutely crucial about this procedure is that you get this reservoir that you are capturing the oil into clean. Now you see there's a little residue in there from a previous sample. For the scientific process to work correctly, you have to have this ultra, 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 ultra clean. It has to be clean, clean. Brake cleaner and air is, is how we do this. Okay, first of all, you use, use brake cleaner. Don't be using that Greenpeace brake cleaner that's not flammable. Use the flammable stuff. It's the only stuff that really works. Spray it in there. Spray the lid. Get it all nice and clean. Okay. Pour them out. And lots of air. Now that's clean. That's what I'm talking about. That kind of clean. Do the upper, the lid too. Do not use a shop towel. Do not use a shop towel to wipe these things out. You will get contamination in there from the shop towel, fibers and whatnot. That w this is an ultra, ultra precise test. So you've got to make sure that your sample is as clean as possible. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Got this ultra, ultra clean. That's happy. Next step is to take your extraction tube and clean it out. There's always residual that's inside here. Spray a little, I'm not going to go and show you with a shop air, but if you spray some brake cleaner down in here, just a little bit, and then spray your air so it blows everything out. You don't want to contaminate your sample with anything that's inside this hose either. You pull your dipstick tube. You want to take your dipstick and measure with your dipstick the length of the tube just by just by feeling. And you want your tube to go in the dipstick about another two or three inches, about that far. See how much further than the dipstick I'm sticking it in. And then hold this with your finger at this end. So when you separate the two, you know that's how far that you've got to stick this tube inside the dipstick. 
Stick it down in there. All the way up until your fingers are right there. Okay. So that's the perfect spot to have it in there. Now, on top of here it says pump. This is the side that you want to hook your tube to and then your pump goes to this side. Hook it up. Got your hoses hooked to the top of it here. And you pump. And you keep doing this until you start to see oil come into the sample jar. Okay, see that sample jar starting to take oil in? You don't need a lot, keep pumping it. Alright. You want to get it about half full. About all you need is half full. They don't need much of this. Okay, so now we got about half full in there. Alright, we're done. Take this tube, your tube here, pull it out just a little bit, okay? So that it's so it's not down in the oil. Take this part loose and stick it up in here in, in, in one of the little spots in the hood and let it drain back while you're gonna do this next procedure. Don't ever let this 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 reservoir get upside down with this pump because it'll suck oil into the pump, it'll destroy the pump. The oil will actually mess up the seals inside here and it won't work anymore. Okay, got the hoses loose, we've got the reservoir. So you pop the top off of your sample jar here. And you have your oil sample. Take your oil sample, pour it carefully into the shipping jar. Now, you don't need a huge amount of oil for the sample, okay? You don't want to fill it past this point, but anywhere in this area and up is more than enough for what they're going to do with it. Wipe the edge here. Be careful not to get this to the inside. Tighten this down. At this point, I like to take some packing tape and put it around the outside of the sample bottle. Um, this way, it's been sealed and it won't come unsealed. This is crucial that you do this correctly. Put your name, your address, your phone number. This is the most crucial one. Email address. Okay, your city and state over here email address. You don't have a distributor sales rep. You can put your contact as powerstrokehelp.com Engine. What type, of, what type of lube is it? The date sampled. What is it? In other words, what type of lube? Is it Rotella? Is it, is it Dello? What, what are you running? How long do you have it in there? How many miles or kilometers? Or time? Did you add lube? Did you change the lube? Did you change the filter at this point? Component manufacturer, you know, Ford Navistar 7.3, component model, um, diesel, you know, it's not, you, they, do, they do transmissions, gears, industrial gears, hydraulic compressors, all that sort of thing. Um, they've got a bunch of different things that they can do. So, but make sure you say diesel engine, okay? Uh, application is transportation, uh, lube manufacturer and product name. So lube manufacturer up here is, you actually put it here, lube manufacturer, product name, grade, SAE, is your full flow or bypass filter, what's your micron rating, and how big is the system. Once you have this filled out, and make sure you do it correctly, this part, this is actually a big sticker. So this part tears off down here, like that. 
All right, so you have these stickers down here. If you send this jar in without this piece of paper included in the jar, they're going to toss it in the trash can. On this part you just tore off, you've got a couple stickers. Number one is this sticker. This sticker goes on the side of the sample jar. Okay, that's a barcode. Chirp. And then it'll link to this, and there's a person who puts this data in. Make sure you put co component ID and sample date. There's your tracking number. Take this sheet that you have now completely filled out correctly and fold it in half. Wrap it around the inner bottle, like so. Okay. And drop her into the big bottle. The other three stickers here is, this is your shipping address. I put my return address on one of these stickers. You pull the shipping address off, you put it on the side of the jar. Put your return address above it. And then, take your handy dandy roll of tape. Take your handy dandy roll of tape and tape it on. The United States Post Office will ship this, but you have to go through the line and you have to explain to them that it has fluid in it and that it's an oil sample going to Polaris Laboratories. You can put this in a, another box or, or the priority box and ship it with, with it, or that way, or you can ship it Federal Express. Um, I prefer to use the post office because they're used to shipping these funny little things for me. But you have to disclose to them that it is an oil sample and that it is fluid. But this is how you do it and it has to be taped around here or else they won't take it. That's the correct way to ship this. So now you're ready to go for a ride to the post office and take this to them. You have to disclose that there's fluid in here and that it's non-flammable, it's, it's motor oil sample. They'll take it. But they you have to disclose it to them. And then wait for your email. I like to take this sticker and I like to put it on the edge of my computer screen to remind me to check my email, my spam, sometimes like AOL or these others will throw anything to spam, the spam folder, uh, but it just reminds me to check uh, for this uh, email coming that's going to have uh, the PDF in it. Once you get your, your PDF file, it's going to have the sample report in it. Open it up and take a look at it and take a look at this next video uh, in this tutorial here uh, to explain how to read one of those sample reports.